All right, mate, welcome to the delights of late summer in Melbourne. Nice to uh, see you. Um, mate, I, I'm running a bit late. I, 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 I think that uh, belligerent dictators like uh, Putin mm. and Chairman Xi and Kim Jong un are a far greater immediate existential threat to the world than global warming. Would you generally agree with that proposition? Well, they're a more acute threat. They're a more acute threat indeed. That's right. I mean, uh, if, if we can go out in terms of uh, uh, sorts of act, sorts of actions that they conceivably could take. Indeed. Yeah. And indeed, are taking. In indeed. Case of Vladimir Putin. Yeah. But I don't know that. I'm not sure where that gets us. Uh, well, um, the the uh, global media seems still as interested in uh, climate change as they are in the existential threat that faces the world from these dictators. And uh, I'm pleased that you and I are on the same page with that. Um, I'm going to have to go in. Uh, good on you, mate. You have a good day. Thank you. See ya. See ya. I'm grateful to Mark for uh, being prepared to have a chat with me on his way into the studio. and. <laughs> I'm pleased that we are in agreement that the most acute and I said immediate threat to the planet comes from belligerent dictators, not from global warming. <laughs> And I especially note the irony of uh, talking about global warming uh, in Melbourne today, where it's 15 degrees uh, in late summer. Uh, I, I, I acknowledge that uh, in other parts of Australia, um, I, I'm seeing reports of 35, 40 degrees and, and higher temperatures. Australia is a land of drought and flooding rains and has been forever. Flooding rains produce uh, growth in the forests and, and under underbrush. And when it dries out, there is a, a risk and a reality of fires. I've heard reports of uh, devastating bushfires in Australia in the late 1800s. I was in Melbourne. Uh, I was at Black Saturday in 2009. We were living in a, uh, a bedsit in Spring Street at the time, having just arrived in Melbourne uh, shortly before. And I remember walking out into the street that morning my recollection it was 45 degrees and blowing an absolute gale so I didn't stay out very long uh, but if I recall this was uh, precisely the day that uh, then police commissioner Christine Nixon decided that uh, she'd have a meeting with her biographer uh, have a hair done I think and go out to dinner that night while police under her command were out in the field risking their lives to uh, safeguard the communities where uh, they were working. Uh, I regarded Christine Nixon's behaviour as an absolute disgrace, uh, but uh, she still has her uh, admirers. <laughs> Speaking of global warming uh, and its effects, I remember uh, Tim Flannery in uh, 2007 uh, saying that um, rainfall was going to decline and even the rains that fall are not going to fill our dams and rivers and we know how that's uh, worked out in the last couple of years I had a look at the uh, Bureau of Meteorology figures half an hour ago for Australia uh, Sydney and Melbourne water storages are about 95%
I think Adelaide's about 70%. Canberra's 100%. Perth's 50%, the, uh, the lowest of uh, Australian capital cities. But a point that I uh, always make with Melbourne is that Melbourne has the lowest maximum storage water capacity, water storage capacity, of uh, the three major capital cities, Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane, despite being, I believe, the, uh, ha having the fastest growing population in the country. And uh, one of the reasons that Melbourne has the lowest maximum storage capacity is that a few years ago the then Labor government decided not to build a, a dam on the Mitchell River but to uh, build a desal plant at Bontaki. The desal plant cost I think five or six billion dollars and it's hardly ever been used. My recollection is that the uh, proposed dam on the Mitchell River was going to cost about two billion dollars and would have provided not only water for the growing population of Melbourne but uh, recreational facilities for uh, people in, in that part of Victoria. But the Greenies uh, wanted it stopped because the fish were using the water in the river. Um, the people of Victoria pay for the decisions that uh, their governments make and sometimes they work out and sometimes they don't. Bill Thompson for Outside Insiders.